review time. I'm Mr. M Lewis. I'm Mr. Miller. Mr. Remember Miller? the first question on the quiz is your name. Right. So right. we got that right. So now we're moving on. All right. So question number one on your review packet. All right. Just a simple kind of review from last unit. We gave our list. So we entered it into one ver stats, list mm -hmm. one. And Mr. Miller, we have found our following statistics. So what was our mean? Okay. The mean was uh, 1,356.5. Okay. The standard deviation was 204. The median is 1,356.5. And the IQR is 177. 177. Okay, maybe you want to put one variable stats at the top. Okay. Just to remind people, that's where we got those things from. So enter in this one, run that command. And then we want to make a modify. Could you circle that word modify? Yes, I um, can. The last quiz, it asked for a modify plot. And it was data that had outliers, but people do regular plots quite yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I had that a lot too. You got to pick the one with the outliers. So, and it says modify, got to do it. All right, Mr. Lewis, the minimum All right. is 1,030. Okay. And Q1 is 1275. 1275. The median is 1356.5. Wow, you even got the 0.5 in there. Oh, yeah. uh, Q3 is 1452. 1452. The highest value that's not an outlier is 1522. 1522, so right around here. And then you got the big boy. 1763. 1763. That was a good year. <laughs> so, if it's a regular box plot, it'll be marked wrong. So, if it asks for a modified box plot and has outliers, you gotta show them. Yep. All right, let's do it. Come okay. On, like Multiple yep. choice. Number two. What's it say, Mr. Lewis? All right. So, we want what's the better summary for this data, the mean or the median? Ooh, they're both so good. I know. But I'm gonna think. It's the median, because we're a little skewed. Uh, very skewed, actually. So yes. it's skewed which way, though? Uh, it's skewed to the right. Very good. Stretched out to the right. So the right half of the data from the median up is much more stretched out than the lower half. So if data has outliers or it's skewed, then the median is the best choice. Right. When do you use the mean? We use the mean when it's normal. When it looks like a normal curve. Right. Good shape, unimodal, symmetrical, when it kind of looks like a normal curve, exactly. that's when we use mean. All right, so here we get phone calls again. According to the graph from problem nine, how many phone calls did she make? I'm going to guess that's this graph right up here, even though it was problem two. All right, uh, so how many phone calls did she make? So one. This would be problem nine, I guess. <laughs> how many calls did she make? Well, I don't really know. Because this is length of calls. Yeah. That's what's graphed. I know. So Not the number of calls, the length of calls. So, so if you're thinking... Uh, I think it's E. It is. It cannot be determined. That's not part of the graph. Yeah. So remember, unless they tell us, we don't know how many calls were made. At least five. But beyond that, I don't know. Right. All right. Moving on. Okay. Now we're going to compare some box plots. Again, this is just review from last unit. All right. This stuff doesn't go away. So they summarize two data sets. So which one of the following must be true? Does the median of set A is greater than the median of set B? Oh, these look uh, exactly the same. Yeah, cross that one off. Yeah, I'm going to say no on that one. The AP test likes these kind of questions, by the way. Is it 1, 2, 1, 2 only? You know, something like that. The IQR of set A is greater than the IQR of set B. Well, yeah, this box is much bigger than this box. Yes, yeah, so remember the so IQR, two. Q3 minus Q1 is the width of the box. So 2 works. Uh, just because they give us some, some other options, let's check out some more. The mean of set A is greater than the mean of set B. Well, yeah, that would be true because it's skewed to the right. So could you draw in the means for those? Approximately, where would they be? Well, the mean here would probably be right here at the median. Yeah. The mean here probably just... Greater than the... Since yeah, the medians greater. are equal, the one above it we know has a greater mean. Right. Okay, because so it's higher than the median. Three works. Set A contains more data than set B. That I don't It's know. more spread out, but yes. that doesn't mean that it contains more data. Right. So the answer would be D. Awesome. Two and three. Okay. Z-scores. Yeah, loving our Z-scores. Okay. So we've already kind of, uh, we used one bear stats here to compute our mean and our standard deviation. So, Mr. Miller, I wrote those in. Which one is, the what's mean our is mean? The mean is 71.5. 
71.8, 71.8, and the standard deviation is 22.1. 22.1. So Martha, Martha, okay. Martha, Martha. Martha looks like an overachiever there. Right, so Martha's right here at 94. So remember the formula for Z is the unit minus the mean divided by our standard deviation. And what's our z-score? One. One. Big old one. So she is one standard deviation away. So that's what that means. She is one standard deviation above the mean. And we know it's above because it's a positive one. Very good. Okay. All right. Let's do Mike. Uh, Mike needs a little help. Yeah. Mike, Mike kind of bombed this one. So we got 31, 71.8, all over 22.1. I already think this is going to give us a negative number. Negative 8, 1.85. 1.85. So what does that mean? Well, Mike is negative 1.85 standard deviations below the mean. If it had a normal distribution, that means that he's like uh, less than, he's like the third or fourth percentile, probably somewhere around there. Yeah, he's pretty... Pretty, pretty down. Almost at the two standard deviations below the mean. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so we'll do some comparisons. All right. So here's three tests. Okay. And we know that Ralphie scored 80 on all three tests. All right. Compared to the other students, which class did he do the best? So this is basically we need to find the Z scores for all three. Here we go. Three Z scores. Okay. So. 80 minus 72, that would be 8 over 16. It's so 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Above average. Okay. So the next one, 60 minus, that would be negative 20 divided by 25. Actually, it's positive 20. It's, he got 80 on all the tests. So 80 oh, I'm sorry. 60. Yes, you're right. Positive 20. Let's so make 20 that divided by 25. Doing this too fast. Is 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Okay, and then 80 and minus 75 would be positive 5 over 6. It's 0 0.833. Three. Oops, 3, 3, 0.833. So, Z scores, he was above average on all of them. He was. But compared to the other students, which class did he do the best in? He did the best in U.S. history. History. Okay. That was a solid class. All right, B. All right, Ralph is geometry teacher, added three points to the score of each geometry test. What would the mean and standard deviation of the new updated scores be? Well, when you add three, uh, it affects the mean, but not the standard deviation. So right. the new average would be 75. 75. And it would be the same standard deviation, 16. And so our standard deviation would it's still be 16. 16. She just shifted the scores up by three. Right. So his chemistry teacher multiplied the chemistry scores by 1.2 by increasing them by 20%. Find the mean and standard deviation of the new scores. So now our standard deviation gets bigger. Yeah, multiplication affects everything. So uh, the mean's going to go up by 20%. So that would be a new mean of 72. And we've got to multiply the standard deviation by that. So 25 times 1.2 is 30. Okay, that's that. Okay. Done, so. All right. Find the number of senior deviations from the mean, round to the nearest hundred. So here we have the average number of college students spent on homework is four hours with a mean deviation of 0.75 hours. That's per day. That is per day. It's a lot of homework per day. Wow. How many standard deviations from the mean would a student be if they spent two hours of homework? Homework. Not so bad. You get up at like one in the afternoon, get your homework done by five. I guess that kind of avoids going to class. I don't know. Yes. Maybe it's not I so bad. That, You're not in class be... all day. So that helps. All right. So how many standard deviations from the mean would a student be if they spent two hours on homework? All right. Basically, we're finding the z-score. So okay. two hours on homework is not much for a college student. They're below no. average. So two minus the four. Yes. All over... 0.75. So already you know that's below the 4, so you could probably, all these with above, probably cross them all off. So it is negative 2.667, so that means 2.667 below the mean. Right, so that would be C.
All right, so you gotta watch carefully. A was above the mean, C was below the mean. So you gotta realize that would be a negative C score. That's a, had a pen accident. It oh. would be C. It okay. So our Z is negative 2.67. All right. So I'm gonna take a nap while you do eight. <laughs> Here are some statistics for the annual Wildcat Golf Tournament. Lowest score, 60. Mean of 97. Median of... Um, so they give us all our fun statistics there. Suppose it was very windy and the golfer's score went up seven strokes. Tell the new value for each of the summary. So if we're just adding seven strokes, we know that only a few things change. The measure of the position would change and the measures of spread should not change. Right. So the low score of 67... Well, so they would, all have a low score of 67, so we can't eliminate based on that. Right. But the mean, mean. A has mean 97. So we know mean is going to change. Yeah, so that was ASCL. the original mean, so get rid of A. Then they all have the same, from B through E, they all have the same uh, median. Yep. Um, but the range, if you take a look, the original range was 83? No, it was 90. And so after adding 7 to the scores, the range should still be 90. Right. So the only one that gets the range right is D. Yeah. Because remember. You kind of read through them carefully. Yeah. So uh, the measures of spread should stay the same. Okay. So much for his nap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Problem Here 9. We have the percent of bottles, the volume more than 21 ounces. So remember, now we're doing our normal CDF. Okay, because we want the area under the curve. So here we want normal CDF. Our, so we want more than 33 ounces. So 33 ounces is our min. Our max would be, you know, 100,000. Okay, our mean was 32.3. And our standard deviation was 1.2. And... Mr. Miller, what would our percent under our curve be? It would be uh, 28%. 28%. Now, on the quiz, do they have to draw a diagram to show their work? So they showing do. their work is showing the diagram. So and here was calculator our... Calculator command is kind of useful, but not really necessary. And here was our mean here. We wanted this area up here. Good. So, or not, because we have several to do. It's hard to do with the pen, but make sure you label the mean, the standard deviation, off values. Yes. So make a good diagram. So that's showing your work. So uh, you'll get most of the credit, but calculator error happens. That's understandable. Okay, next. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Now we want less than 31.8 ounces. So same command, all right? So except for this time, we're going from negative 100,000. How about just a diagram this time? Yeah, and then we can do that. I think um, we're okay with all the rules. Okay. So here's the 32.3, we're going to less than 31.8, all this fun stuff down here. And it's 32.3? Yep. 1.2. Make sure I got it right. Okay. I got 33.84%. Right. Okay. Bam. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, some more CDFs. Okay, same thing. Now we're going between 30 and 32. Okay, so this is our between function. So here we have 32.3. So right below it's 32. Here's 30. I want this area. And 37.4. Okay. All right, 40th Bam. percentile. 40th percentile. This is asking for a data value. Right, so now we're using the inverse function. Okay, in norm is the command we're going to use. Uh, our mean was still 32.3, but our 40 percentile. All right, this is the 50th percentile, so I'm going to think 40 is right here. And we want 40, everything's behind it for the 40th percentile. What do we got? 32. 32. So we should actually put units in. So it should be 32 ounces since it's for volume and ounces. Ounces. So 32 ounces has 40% of the data less than that. Right. So what value is greater than 85% of? Is greater than 85% of all others? Ooh, be careful on this one. 
right? So we want it bigger than 85% of all the other data. So that would mean, so this is our 50 percentile up here, be the 85th so percentile. We want it bigger, so we want the mark that 85% of the data is all behind it. Oh, greater, yeah, so this is a normal question. Right, they just worded it strangely. All right, I thought this was going to be one of those where we had to switch. Nope. Which one we use. So greater than 85%, that's what percentile means. It's 33.5. 33.5 ounces. Okay, so that was no different than just asking 85th percentile. Nope. All right, so human pregnancies, the length of pregnancies are described in a normal model with mean 268 and a standard deviation of 15 days. What percentage of pregnancies are expected to last at least 300 days? You know okay. what the first decision you have to make is? What the word at least means? Oh, okay, that's one of them. <laughs> Means greater than or equal to 300 days. Yeah, right. that was on our last quiz in the stretch. That kind of got a lot of people, at least. Means greater than or equal to 300. Right. So here's our 268. Our well, 300 is going to be out here. We well, my other question was, how do you know if this is a normal CDF or an inverse normal prop? Oh, good question. Well, I, I know this is a normal CDF because we're not given a percentile. We want to find the percent. So okay. it's what percentage. Okay, good. And so, what's the lower limit? Uh, the lower limit would be 300. And upper is something big? Something big. 268. Yes. And 15. Gives us? 1.6%. 1.66? Yeah, because, All right. you know, uh, e. that would be 32 days late. Yes. That would be one upset pregnant mom. All right, so the heights of American men aged 18 to 24 are normal with mean 68 and standard deviation 2.5. About 25% 20, 20 of these men are taller than... What kind of question what? is this, do you think? This is an inverse normal. Right, because it's giving us a percent. 20% are taller than what? Right. So I want to see how you draw the diagram. Okay, so... This is kind of tricky. Right, so 20% are taller than a number, so... Some number, 20% of the guys are taller, that would mean that 80% are to the other yeah, way. Yeah, so we can still shade that area, right. but just when we use our calculator, we're gonna, that's the area we're interested in. I'm going to put a okay. value x down here. We're trying to find that value of x. It has 20% above it, but 80% below it. So right. this is the problem I was looking for earlier, uh, where we have to use 80% instead of 20%. So right. uh, inverse normal, mm -hmm. 0. 0.8. 68 yeah. and 2.5. It's got to be something. 70.1. 70.1. So right here at C, 70 inches. Yeah, the one closest to that. Okay. All right. Going in test scores. Large College has 400 kids. So we want the cutoff value of the top 60% of the score. So this is just a regular inverse normal problem. No kind of trick to it. No, there's a little bit of trip, oh. isn't it? I don't think so. The cutoff for the top 60%. Oh, the top 60%. You yeah. are right. I, I read it too fast. Top 60. So that would mean we want the top 60. So that would mean we want the top 60. So the bottom is 40%. All right. So inverse normal was 40. Yes. My fault. All right. All right. That would be a pain to miss that one. So, got to be careful in the wording. So, 0.4, and then um, what's the rest? 80, and then 6. Turns out 78.5. Hmm, which is not an answer around here. So, a large. With mean 80, and standard deviation. Are we doing okay? So, or, or did you uh, talk me out of this? Six? What is the cutoff for the top 60%? Yeah, it's not on there. So we're, we're still good. So cross off those. So if you're doing this and, and got one of those, I got bad news for you. <laughs> and 78.5. 78.5. That can happen in review packs. It can. Sometimes we just make mistakes. I have a, just a, I have a, I have a feeling that uh, if we did it the wrong way, 
We would get 81.5, which would be A. Yeah, but this is how it reads, the top 60%. Yeah. Would have 40% below it. Okay. Uh, all the school's football players taking the weight room and see what they could bench press. We're on so, the last page, Lewis. We're, we're there. All right. Uh, largest amount of weight of any players could lift was 260 pounds. Suppose that the player that lifted 260 pounds increased his amount of Man. lift to 295. Which of the following statistics would not be so? So we are increasing. I hope he's not juicing. The top score, right? Uh, so if we increase the top score, which one of these would not be affected? Standard deviation would be affected because yes, it gets more would. spread out. Cross that baby out. The mean will go up. Right, because our data gets higher. The range has the max in it, and if we make the max bigger, the range gets bigger. Cross right. that baby out. And of course, that is the max, so yeah. that's going to get bigger. So we're left hmm. with C, the median. Of course. Which we should remember from last unit. All right. Okay. Now, um, marriage ages. So here's some box plots that we're comparing, and we're going to probably have a brief report. I'm not going to write it all out. We can maybe just discuss what it would be. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to write with a digital pen, but you should write in sentences. Use sentences to describe it. Right. And, and, and usually you... shape, center, spread. Right. And oh, underline it up there. Oh, So right here. Uh, we didn't uh, really uh, take too many points off in the last quiz for that, but on the last quiz, the AP prom that was right in the rubric for grading it, is students should compare the shape, center, and spread. Remember the catapult prom? Mm -hmm. they, were, they, should, they were to compare those, those three things right? Uh, as they were giving similarities and differences. All right, so we'll, tr we'll try to adhere to that. So this is the uh, age at first marriage. Okay. Yeah, we guys kind of wait a little bit longer. So we could compare it that, you know, women are slightly skewed to the right, higher. Yeah. So the first thing we should, yeah. We I would say that. they're both skewed higher. They're both skewed to the right. The first yeah. thing we should do is uh, uh, remember to state what the distributions are about. Okay. So uh, we may not write everything out here, but you should say the distribution of marriage ages. Or the distribution of ages for women is something and ages for men is something. At least in the beginning, uh, talk about what the data is about. Okay, so as we're comparing center, the median for the women is much smaller than the median for the men. Yes, it is. So the median for the women looks like it's around 21, like yep. slightly lower even. And for the men, between 23 and 24, if you want to call it 23.5. Yeah, that would closer be to 24. Yeah, so the typical male gets married at a little bit later age than the typical female. Um, as far as the IQRs, so when you're talking about spread, you should um, not say the spread for the men is this or that. You should use the statistics uh, uh, to describe the spread. Right. So and the IQR looks about the same, doesn't they, it? They do. This one goes from about 20 and a half to about 23. This one goes to about 23 to about... 24 or 25 and a half. Yeah, the range for women might be slightly bigger, but the IQR is about the same. The range are yes. very different. No. Um, they're both skewed to the right. They are. So, uh, and uh, I don't know if this is a modified box plot or not, but there doesn't seem to be any outliers. No. So, all right. So, uh, both. Uh, the similarities are in their, uh, the, their spread and in their shape. The difference is in their centers. Yep. Okay. Okay, then. All right, Mr. Lewis. All right, good. We made it. We did. All Both. right. In class, before the quiz, I'm going to give my class a chance to ask any questions they still have. Well, sure. Of course. I mean, I'll always take a question. It's the way we roll. All right, so be prepared with your journal and review assignments tomorrow, and good luck.